All right. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Mission Impact Series. Um, you are, this is the third installation of slaying um, social issues for social um, impact businesses. So in the first episode, we talked about the power of social impact businesses. So you should go watch that. In the second one, we talked about starting social impact businesses. Definitely watch that. And today we're going to be talking about social and um, entrepreneurship as a tool for systematic change. So before I go on, make sure to like, share, and subscribe and comment below. Also go on over to Ty's page, um, Capacity Central, like, share, do all of that stuff over there as well. Okay. All right. So in a social entrepreneurship as a tool for systematic change, we are going to explore the potential for social entrepreneurship to um, create systematic change. So that's on a systemic level, okay? This could include discussing how social entrepreneurship can be used to address inequalities. We talked a little bit about social injustice um, in one of the um, other episodes. Combat climate change. You know we got global warming going on. Um, and promote a sustainable in, um, economic development. This also includes examining the roles of social entrepreneurship in policy development and advocacy. All right. So if this is your first time catching us, my name is Tracy V. Allen. I am the owner of Impactors Management Group. I help social impact businesses design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyles that they desire while impacting their communities. I am Ty Boone. I am owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mainly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup to struggle to sustainability and success. And Tracy, you mentioned advocacy and policy change as one of the things, right? Um, I do some work with a, a, a lot of other organizations, you know, grantees who are doing just that, right? One of the big things right now, you know, HIV, stigma reduction, you know, that kind of thing, um, rights, uh, you know, around um, people living with HIV and advocacy for for that population is huge. Um, mm -hmm. Have performing organizations where you actually go and you, and you go to legislation, right? And you say, and, and you advocate for your cause and there's whole advocacy trainings and things that you offer um, so that people can understand what it is you're trying to accomplish, right? Um, right. A lot of times there's just, a, there's a lack of understanding, a lack of knowledge, a lack of cultural competency um, for a lot of folk. And then these organizations or these businesses are, are formed to, to, to fill that gap that you talked about last week, where mm -hmm. it, if this piece is missing, if I could get people to understand my community by advocating for my community, let's do that. If I can get people to understand, um, you know, the, the economic situation in my community by you know, teaching classes about, you know, how to improve your financial literacy or whatever, um, that's what I do to bring about a change on a systematic level, a systemic level, um, taking that to the places where you have to go such as legislation and those powers to be to, to talk about it. That's the first right. step, being able to talk about it and understanding what change you're trying to make. Mm -hmm. And that means that you have to be very knowledgeable, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're not knowledgeable yourself, you got to bring somebody on board who has um, studied this, understand the dynamics of how X will impact the community and how it will create systemic change. And not only that, how long will this systemic change take, to, um, take mm -hmm. right? Um, because systemic change is not overnight. Not um, overnight. It usually takes several years. Um, like Entry sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Like if we're doing something in the school system, when I used to be teaching, we like it takes us about three years to figure out if that actually works. Right. Mm -hmm. We can't do it for one school year and be like, OK, it doesn't work. or OK, it works. No, that's not a good um, measurement of data. It takes a, a lot longer to really build data to do like A-B testing to see what's going on, what's truly happening and in which, which groups of people and how it's happening. So it takes time for systemic change to happen. 
And that means that, again, we go back to record keeping, keeping good records, keeping good data, um, developing some type of system of, an, of um, analysis and evaluation around it. But it is absolutely possible for whether you are a social enterprise or you're a nonprofit or you are just a social entrepreneur to affect systemic change. People lobby on Capitol Hill on a regular basis, right? For all these things that we think about, um, that you could think about, and I don't want to name anything specific, but um, a lot of the laws that are favorable to you or to someone else or not favorable to you or someone else had someone going up there and lobbying for that change to happen, right? That's with evidence, right? So it's right. like, you know, if you're talking about something on a systemic level, you got to show proof that this is a problem. Right. right. And so what we have a lot of businesses getting started, you know, in the name of social impact, but there's no evidence to this, the problem where it's just, you know, mm-hmm. our assumptions and assumptions is not are, are not evidence. But you, you think about things like the civil rights movement, you know, for right. example, where this is evidential, you know, evidence that there's a mistreatment of a certain group of people because everybody sees it. So now we have <laughs> do they? Well, everybody who who cared about it saw it, right? Yeah. So this is where you're is out on Front Street. Everybody who cared about it saw it. Black Lives Matter, right? Mm-hmm. You know, every, Ooh, that's that blue girl. Stuff that's blue, right? So you see, you see this stuff. So that's your. If you were in a court, you know, situation, I can give you this tape. You can see that this is inhumane if you have a heart, right? Right. And for those people who care about it they be willing to support this thing because they see this. I think about, you know, Alec's initiative. Alec is my son. Um, he's eight years old. And what he does is he'll, he'll give, in addition the to everything. The organization is called Nonprofit and Kids. Nonprofit and Kids. His, his initiative. <laughs> and he, you know, we're driving down the street, you know, before, before all this started and he sees homeless people and he sees this and he's like, well, they don't have stuff, mm-hmm. right? You know, realizing that hey they don't have stuff like I got stuff they don't have stuff can mm-hmm. we give them stuff you know going my I'm, I'm from rural Alabama going down there and say okay well they don't even have ma they don't even have like toothpaste or you know and things like that right mm-hmm. so uh, and it's evident because you you can look at you can look at the you know I'm from Alabama you can look at the Alabama Department of Health you know and look at what the what the income levels are what poverty right. looks like you know, all of this is evident, you know, that there's a need for these things that are being provided or being offered. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people miss that research, just kind of going out and doing the basic research, you know, what is happening. And if again, if there's nothing there, if there is no evidence, then you have to provide some. You have right. to, and you have to, you know, we need some more money poured into this because of this. And you have to really understand the depths of the problem. You got to be the subject matter expert in that thing that you do before you can that comes in in your needs statement Mm -hmm. your case statement whatever you want to call it right Mm -hmm. and that's where you know you get that you go back to college that's how you write that you go back to college and you back up your stuff with evidence from people who have done the research right Mm -hmm. if you want to tell me that there's homelessness in alabama and that whatever town you came from has x amount you know, most of the people, you probably say, oh, most of the people there are homeless. <laughs> really? Who mm-hmm. says that? Right. You got to show you us have some evidence. Right? <laughs> show well, us some evidence woman, that that is true. I had a woman come to me years ago, and she wanted me to write a grant for her for um, for food, right? Like this was mm-hmm. something. And she says, because in my community, about 70% of the kids don't eat after school. And I, and I said, that's a <laughs> First of all, she lived in like this, you know, middle income uh-huh. neighborhood or organization was kind of focused up there. I said, like, are you sure in that in that neighborhood that 70 percent uh-huh. of the kids don't eat after school? Uh-huh. And she said, well, a couple of kids have come to my house with my son and they and they said, they, ma'am, that's not that's not actual information. Look right. at the income level in this community that you're serving. They ain't eat after school because they didn't go home because they right. didn't want to eat after school. Yeah. Right. We cannot write a grant to support this because this is not true. Mm-hmm. Right. You need some facts. Go back and look at the data. People in that neighborhood, they can get food. They just, you know, that's what they want to do. 
And you have to know the difference between that. You know, am I not get, doing this because I don't want to? Uh-huh. Or are we really in a position where this is not being provided for us? Right. And we always have a natural segue into our last segment, it seems like, because in our last segment in this series, we're going to be talking about challenges and opportunities in social entrepreneur ecosystem. So (laughs) I hope you found this information to be um, worth your while. Uh, Again, like, share, subscribe, um, comment below, go over and like Ty's channel, which is Capacity Central. And until next time, guys, bye. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha.